What's going on? Welcome to part two of our deep learning with games, OpenAI, TensorFlow, Python, and all other buzzwords tutorial. In this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is building on the last one, which basically we just kind of showed what what the random games actually look like, uh, just so you can get an idea so when we see the real thing after it's been trained, we can be, like, impressed. So, uh, so once we've seen that, let's go ahead. We're going to comment that random games out. And now we're going to actually define our initial kind of population of data. So when we have an environment that we can generate like this, we can generate training samples. So in this case, they're imperfect training samples because none of these samples are probably going to beat our required score. But we're going to be able to make some samples anyway. <laughs> so the other things you could do, like for example, like if you're trying to treat, treat it train a neural network to do math you actually all those samples could in theory be perfect you could just generate random you know just math numbers plus another number or multiply divide whatever um, and save that as well and then you know so you can generate data really quick so that's what we're going to do here so now let me just make some space and we're going to define initial population so first we're going to have training data just an empty uh, list for now. We're gonna have scores, another empty list, and then we're gonna have accepted scores. <clears throat> training data will be the actual data that we're interested in training on. This will be uh, the observation and the move made. Again, the moves will all be random, <laughs> um, but we're only gonna append to training data if the score happens to be above 50. Now, uh, once we've done that, we're going to say just four underscore in range of initial games. The underscore is just there to denote that we don't give a crap what this is. We're just trying to iterate. So that's what the underscore is. We're going to say the score is currently zero. We're going to save some game memory because we don't want, we're, we're not going to know until the end of the game whether or not we did, we beat the score or not. So we're going to store all the movements and such in game memory. Then what we're going to say is the previous obs observation, if I can spell, previous observation, empty list. And now what we're going to do is iterate through the plausible steps, which in this case are 500 steps. So we're going to say um, <clears throat> four underscore in range of the goal steps. We're going to choose a random action. We're going to say action equals random dot rand range zero two again does that some of me wants to change this i'm not going to change it on the fly but but this might be better because i'm not familiar with this function in all of the environments but i'm curious if it would find like because some of the environments have like a lot of choices that you might forget about or, or something and if the agent could know but in reality the agent's not going to know that i don't know i don't know if that's fair anyway we're just going to do this for now so zero basically random dot rand range zero to two literally corresponds to being it will either be a zero or a one this is rand range two two so this will only generate zeros and ones so we have the action now what we're going to do is basically we're just going to take this line here i'm just going to copy and paste it observation boom step take the action awesome now, if len uh, pre previous observation is greater than zero, i.e. if we had a previous observation that we could have made, well, then we're going to game memory.append whatever that previous observation was, prev observation, and action. So what are we doing here? So this is something I don't normally see. I'm not really sure when the action happens. So, but when I look at this code here, <clears throat> it suggests to me that the observation is occurring after we took the action. So saving the action according to the actual observation that's returned doesn't make much sense to me. I think it's smarter to take that previous observation and the current action. I think that's smarter. And then basically when you're done here, you say now the new previous observation is equal to observation. I might be totally wrong here. Feel free to just go off of the basic observation and not be one frame behind if I'm incorrect. Um, either way, we, sh we should do fine. So 
Uh, pre observation equals observation. Okay, so now what we're going to say is score plus equals whatever that reward is, which again will either be one or zero, but zero will only occur if we've lost. <clears throat> if done, we break. Now, if all this occurs, because remember, so so this is for the entire game, and then we're storing that game's, you know, happenings to the game memory. Now, if that game is indeed um, a winning game, if we did good, uh, basically what we want to do is we want to save that information. And we're going to do that for however many games we're willing to play, which in this case is going to be 10,000. Again, you could do a much smaller number if you, if you feel like that's unfair. Now, uh, let's see, what was I like? So, okay, so once we're, once we're done with the game, now we want to analyze that game and say, okay, did we do better than um, whatever the score is we were looking for? So... So this is the actual game that happened, and then this is just iterating through the game. So we're going to come down and just, we're going to be on, still under this for loop here. Now what we're going to ask is if the score was greater than or equal to the score underscore requirement. Yes, score requirement. If that was acceptable, we're going to say accepted underscore scores um, <clears throat> dot append score and then we're going to say for data in game memory what do we want to do well um, basically if data one so data in game memory did we append it yes we did okay <laughs> oh boy uh, we're not going to get through this anyway <laughs> this contains it's a list of lists of the observation data which is like four data points and then the action that we took which is a zero or a one but when we actually go to train, we can't use zero. Well, we actually could use zero or one as an output since this is binary. <laughs> um, but a lot of these games are not binary. You're going to have like four choices at least, like all the arrow keys, like up, down, left, right. So <clears throat> we actually could get away with, with a single output, but we're not going to do that. So we're going to convert it to a one hot output. So if data one is equal to one, uh, we're going to say output equals zero one elif data one equals zero output equals one comma zero great now <clears throat> what we're going to say is uh whoops training underscore data dot append data zero output great okay so we're done and then once that's done Again, we're iterating through the game still. So whenever the game is over, we're going to go ahead and m.reset. And then we're going to go to scores.append score just to keep track of all of the scores that we saw. And then when that's done, we're outside of the initial games, right? So we've run through however many games we wanted to run through. Now what do we want to do? Well, let's go ahead and training underscore uh, data underscore uh, save. We're just going to convert this all. So numpy array training data. So we're converting tra training data to a numpy array. Uh, then we're going to do np.save and then we're just going to say save.numpy. What are we trying to save? The training data save. That's kind of a long name. Not going to type it. Now let's go ahead and print some things. So let's say um, average accepted score. So these are the filtered scores that we've already done. So we're going to do mean accepted scores. So what's the the average accepted score but then we're also kind of curious what's like the median so we're going to say um, we could also do mode we'll do median for now. median accepted score median accepted scores and then while we're at it we're going to go also just print um, counter accepted Accepted scores. <clears throat> okay, this should be plenty of data for us to assess what kind of data we're training off of. Now let's go ahead and return training data. Whew. Okay, let's save and run that. Oh, we gotta actually run the function. Derp. Copy. Come down here. Paste. Okay, now let's save and run that. <clears throat> if len pre, I think we call it preve observation actually. Yeah, preve observation. 
So prev observation, if lang, prev observation, prev. Okay, let me fix. No, that's done. Let's try again. Oh, we, we type out as well. Right here, score. Three times a charm. Oh my gosh. Wow, this is a lot of typos. I should probably quit. I apologize for all my typos. Hopefully we didn't, yeah, okay, we didn't render. So as you can see, we ran through 10,000 environments really fast, and that's because we didn't render them. <laughs> It actually, you know, it took us a few seconds to run through five. And you can actually use another <clears throat> variable, like remotes equals like, you know, 12 or something. And you could you could run quite a few at a time, but still not going to be as fast as running a headless. Anyway, in these 10,000 examples, the average score was 61, the median was 57. And then here are basically all of the scores. This was actually a really good sample. I've, this is probably one of the best ones I've ever seen. Uh, in most cases, maybe one or none of the scores will be above actually like a hundred. I kind of want to run it again. This is almost like unfair. <laughs> we will we'll, actually we will run this again, so it's okay. But anyway, as you can see, none of these. The best one was a 118. There was only one. Then you had a 113, just one, and so on. And then, then you start really getting into the meat of the ones once you get under about a hundred. Anyway, um, actually, wow, this guy got a 153. Dang. Yeah, this one was just a little unfair. Man, we're going to have to run this one again, probably. Anyway, uh, okay. So what we're going to do now in the next tutorial is create a neural network model that's going to take this training data and fit to the training data. And then we're going to use that network to now actually play the game. Uh, and we'll see how it does playing the game. Anyway, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, complaints about my typos, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.